allowed. Delegate, thank you for that. Um, he completed his PhD here at the uh, University of Carleton under uh, Professor Paul Sims. Uh, I'm happy to say he's now in Alberta and uh, he's working with Thurber, uh, doing very well there. He joined Thurber in 2014 and has been engaged with um, a, lot of a lot of design and R&D projects uh, related to the treatment of all sand stables. He's a registered professional engineer in the province of Alberta uh, and it's a pleasure to have you here. So he's going to talk more about salt water, so please welcome. And the air entry value, the point that the soil starts the saturation, and we need to measure this point. So why we need to measure WRC of tailings? Unsaturated geotechnical properties, such as unsaturated hydraulic conductivity and unsaturated shear strength, are essential for many tailings treatment technologies. But it is usually difficult or time consuming to directly measure unsaturated geotechnical properties. Alternatively, we can measure WRC and we can indirectly estimate these properties by WRC. So there are some empirical methods to estimate water retention in terms of soil, conventional soils. So Zapata et al. in 1999 proposed this equation, uh, these curves, to empirically estimate the water retention curve of tailings based on particle size distribution and atherbable limits. There are some other empirical equations, uh, Wang Minuchen in 1980, and also Fred Lund and Zink, to estimate the uh, water retention curve of uh, tailings. So in terms of leverage methods, in order, in order to measure water retention curve, we can measure matrix suction for low values of suction uh, up to 1500 kPa. And for high values of suction, we can measure total suction. So matrix suction measurement consists of usually direct measurement, which uh, is associated with pressure plate device. In pressure plate device, we regulate matrix suction by applying air pressure and waiting for equilibrium of suction. So this is the schematic diagram of a pressure plate device. As you can see, air pressure is applied, and there is a high wave entry disk, which allows water to flow, but air cannot flow. And we wait for equilibrium of the soil, and that will be a point of stability So there is a modified pressure plate device, which was proposed by Fredland, and uh, you can see the picture of this device, and it can overcome the limitations of conventional equipment. We can have just 
telling in pressure plate device we need multiple samples. We can apply net normal stress along with measurement of volume change. And uh, as I mentioned, we can measure uh, matrix suction up to 1500 kPa. So you know, this table shows other devices that we can use to measure WRC of tailings. More details can be found in the paper, but in the paper, but in summary, we can uh, say that for high values of suction, we can use hygrometer and psychrometer for oil sand tailings to measure uh, to measure total suction. For values below 1500 kPa, we can use uh, access translation technique to directly measure matrix suction. So now what are the challenges for uh, measuring uh, water retention curve of tailings? So as you know, tailings are man-made soils and present additional complications compared to natural soils when measuring the WRC. So one of the challenges is when we want to measure the uh, WRC of the slurry tailings with high volume change. This is an example that was published by Fredland and Rustin in 2013. As you can see, we have a specific sample of old sand tailings with sand to fine of 0.1, and if we want to plot the uh, stability CC based on the volumetric water content versus suction, we'll have two air instruments, which is not correct, we have two entry values for two different initial uh, water contents, which is not correct because air entry value is the geotechnical property of the soil and should be independent of the uh, in initial water content. But if we plot based on the degree of saturation, we don't have this problem. So the most important thing, sorry, so we need to make sure that plots the SWC based on degree of saturation, not water content. Another challenge is the effect of mineral processing and flocculation. Mineral processing and flocculation can change your technical structure, fabric, and particle shape arrangement of tailings. We can have different WRCs for treated tailings compared to natural soils, but with similar particle size distribution. This is an example from Yao et al. in 2016. You can see that there is a significant uh, difference in the air entry value of mature pine tailings with flocculated mature pine tailings. These two samples might have the same particle size distribution, but uh, as you can see, the SWCC is different. So what we have done in this paper, we have reviewed different uh, tailings both hard rock mine tailings and old sand tailings. And uh, we found that, as, as I mentioned, we need to measure the water retention head in order to make sure that the uh, estimation is correct. We have to verify the estimation. So you can see the more details in the <coughs> paper and different to the three researchers that measured the water retention curve of Tailings. And one more interesting thing that in some, some of the old sand tailings samples, flocculated old sand tailings, we found that it's possible that there is two air entry value for the sample, as you can see in the red dots. <coughs> now, I'm going to talk about the applications, why we need to measure uh, WRC of tailings. Uh, I'm just going to summarize two applications, for sure there are other applications as well. The first application is the watering behavior of freshly deposited tailings, and the second one is soil covers to eliminate acid mine drainage of tailings. So for the first application, uh, conventionally, slurry tailings were deposited hydraulically in an area close to mine or behind the dam. Unfortunately, this type of deposition might not be safe due to high risk of dam failure because of liquefaction or other factors related to high water temperature. Robinski, in 1970, proposed a method which called the water tailings, and with the water tailings before the position, and it has two advantages. First of all, we can recycle water, and also when the water tailings are deposited, the strength of the water tailings are higher. So when we deposit tailings in a uh, thickened tailings with Robinski's method, we have a stress history of deposited layer based on unsaturated volume change mechanism that I explained in the first slide. 
With depositing a fresh layer, we have settling in the layer and void ratio is reduced without any change in matrix action or nail normal stress. When we add uh, deposition, the desiccation and drainage, with increasing desiccation, we have matrix action in the layer, void ratio is reduced and matrix action is increased. With depositing a fresh layer on top of the desiccated layer, the bottom layer is reverted <coughs> and matrix action becomes zero or close to zero and we might have increasing void ratio. And with depositing all other layers on top of the uh, bottom layer, the bottom layer is uh, mechanically consolidated into the weight of top layers. So the question is up to what point we have to continue desiccation uh, and in order to answer that we should consider soil water characteristic and we should have less WCC of paint. Another application is soil covers to eliminate acid mine range of drainage of tailings. In capillary barrier covers, which we have um, a layer of fine grain salts in the middle of two coarse grain salts. And we need to measure SWCC of all these materials in order to uh, design the cover. That's another application that I summarized here. So in summary, the WRC can be used to model the unsaturated half hydraulic conductivity and other geotechnical properties of unsaturated deposited tailings. Direct measurement of matrix action using access translation technique, followed by indirect measurement of total suction using dew point potentiometer, is one of the reliable devices uh, methods that we use at Thermal Lab for measuring SWCC of oil sand tailings. Since tailings are man made source and not natural source, the volume change of the slurry tailings and the air entry value of tailings may require a special methods, and as I mentioned, we have to plot based on degree of saturation, not gravimetric water. Relying on empirical methods developed for soils to estimate WFC of tailings without experimental verification by resulting erroneous robust retention curve and specifically erroneous air entry. <coughs> WFC can be utilized by practitioners to facilitate the design of tailings treatment <coughs> such as thin leaf drying, as I in the previous slides and soil cover 